have a Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter number six. Matthew chapter number six. Oh, my voice is going to crack, so don't laugh at me, okay? We start out every year with um, the series that I love to do the most. Now, I will tell you that today is not a typical opening of I Love My Church. This is not actually how we normally open the series. Um, it's, it, it's, it's fallen on January the 2nd, which is great for the cause of the fast. And while the next four weeks will be much more what you're used to, I will tell you that today is a part of I Love My Church. And um, I Love My Church is a series that we do to celebrate not our church, but the church. And we celebrate the, what the Lord is doing, how he's leading and guiding us into what is next. And so this is a month we talk about what we've seen happen. We celebrate some stories. We uh, vision cast and talk about what God is setting before us. All of that is a part of this month, and it's a lot of fun, and it's really exciting. This year, God dealt with my heart a little bit different about the month. God gave me four words just individual words, and they were echoing in my spirit. Um, they were very clear. Uh, I have no doubt that the Lord spoke these into my heart, and I am going to take what the Lord has, has been speaking to me in these four words, and I'm actually going to turn them around, and I'm going to give them back to you to show you what the Lord has been dealing with my heart about, about this church about where we're going. And again, the first day is not a day that a lot of people would be very excited about. This isn't a day you're going to amen me a lot. I wish you would because it would help. But this is not a day that you're going to be super excited about what I'm saying. But we should be. Today is a day that I hope I'm going to open your eyes to see some things that maybe you've never seen before. But the word, the first word that God gave me to talk about is the word hunger. Hunger. It's, it's a very important word. How many of y'all are hungry already? Amen. Come on, anybody in here already hungry? Yeah, I got a, got a few more hours, but some of y'all ain't too far from lunchtime. Um, we're going to look at this word hunger, and we're actually going to talk about it from the, from the point of view, though, of fasting. And we're going to take this idea of fasting. I'm going to explain some things to you, but I'm going to dive a little bit into the vision of why we're doing this. Um, if you would allow me just a few minutes of your time. Let's start in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. It says in the book of Matthew, this is Jesus talking. He says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. Listen what it says. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. How many of you know it's okay to, to be rewarded by God? Come on. Come <laughs> on. And you know what? It is okay. It is okay that I get excited about getting rewarded. I've told people for, for years that, that, that everybody thinks that David fought Goliath because he wanted to be a war hero. David fought Goliath because he was going to get money. He wasn't going to have to pay taxes, and he was going to get a wife. Come on, somebody. That's why he fought Goliath. Because David specifically said, what did he say when they, when they were talking about Goliath? He said, what will be done for the man who fights this giant? He didn't just go out there and fight the giant. He said, what's going to happen to the man that does this? And he says, oh, there's a reward out there. And they start explaining the reward. And what David does, it David, it David attaches the word of God from Samuel, which said, what? You're going to be the king of Israel. He attached that word with a reward that was going to come through a battle that said, you're going to be given the hand of the daughter of the king. So now David... David is connecting the word with now a reward that's going to come through something he's going to engage in. Listen, it is okay to be rewarded because those rewards are oftentimes attached to the word, right? And so it says here that, that, that there is a way to fast, that we are called to do it. And when we do it the way that we've been called to do it, we will be rewarded. Now, now fasting, fasting is a subject for a lot of people that it scares them. Terribly, kind of like the word algebra for me, 
um, when you when I hear the word algebra, I'm done. Like I'm out of the conversation. You do not want me in that. Now fasting for some of you, it's so funny how many people I talk to, and we'll talk about fasting, and and I'll be in a fast of some sort. And so um, I've I've done I don't know several I, I, I haven't kept count 21 day fast where I don't eat for 21 days. And there are people I talk to who just think that's the craziest thing that they've ever heard. Like who would not eat for 21 days? That's that's just dumb. That's ridiculous. And there are these people who would just just hear that word and cringe and, and almost snicker at it sometimes and be like, this is just kind of silly stuff um, that you guys are taking part in that really isn't anything that God actually does anything with. And I'm here to tell you, man, the word is very clear about fasting and the power that comes with fasting. Let me tell you three things fasting is not before we get started because I want to make sure that before I tell you what it is, I want to make sure you know what it is not. Number one, it is not a diet, ladies. Come on. Right? Everybody starts out the new year with a new diet plan. How many of you guys are doing good on day two, right? It is not a diet. And listen, if you treat a fast as a diet, it's not going to take very long for that excitement to wear off of that fast, and you're going to be left empty with nothing because you didn't see the fast for what it was meant to be seen as. So it is not a diet. It has, it has, it has physical benefits, physical benefits. In fact, if you want to go by information, Miss Barbara will be there. She's one of our local, uh, I call her my doctor. And she's, she says I'm not a doctor, but she's, she's the doctor around here, one of our, our many medical people. She would probably love to tell you even some of the physical benefits. Kay uh, is somebody who deals a lot in uh, talking about health and food and, and things that you can, I'm sure she has a lot of great information. There are a lot of great benefits physically, but that's not why I do it. It's just a benefit. Number two, a fast is not a manipulative tool to use on God. It is not a way for me to manipulate God to get God to do what I want God to do. There are people who look at a fast and they see it as just that. There's a quote um, that, that I, I, I've taken a bunch of pictures, um, and, and, and I didn't say this before the message. I've got more notes. I've got enough notes right here to write a book with. And I'm not going to get to everything. I'm not going to read everything. And if you're here and you want more info, I would encourage you to ask me for these notes and I'll send you the whole note set because it's got a bunch of scriptures that I won't even read that I'll just allude to. But there's a lot here. But I, I, I even had a bunch of quotes that I had uh, taken pictures of in my phone about fasting. John Calvin said this. He said, let us therefore make some observations on fasting. Since very many, not understanding what utility there can be in it, judge it not to be very necessary while others reject it altogether as superfluous where its use uh, where its use is not well known it is easy to fall into superstition. In other words, this is John Calvin's way of saying what? That there are two thoughts of fasting. Number one, the thought is, I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven, I don't need to fast. That is not biblical, that is wrong. I'm gonna show it to you in just a moment. Or the other side of fasting is this. I can do this and I can actually manipulate God and make God do something that I want him to do. The point of fasting is not to get something from God. The point of fasting is to get to God. That's the point of it. And then number three, the third thing that is that fasting is that it should not be, it should not be some religious tool that you use as a hypocrite would do to show the world how holy or righteous you are. It is not for everybody to see and recognize and say, oh, wow, look at John. He's fasting, you know, so many days and all of this, and it's so impressive. You know, my pastor is better than your pastor because he fasts longer than your pastor. It's not why we do it. The Bible here um, tells us that fasting is something that is supposed to be a part of every believer's life. I do not want you to miss this. It is not extracurricular activity. It is not, as, as I needed in Ms. Yarbrough's class many times, it is not extra credit. Anybody ever need extra credit in school before? Like you had a 63 and you was trying to get that bumped up before the, 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 uh, the 
progress report or the report card came out and you didn't want mom or dad to see you had a 63. So I would always go to Ms. Yarber. I said, Ms. Yarber, is there any extra credit that I can do in your class so that I can get that grade bumped up? And what was extra credit? It meant that it was not work that other people were going to have to do. It was only for you to do. And if you would do it, then it would bump just you up. That is not what this is. Fasting is meant to be something that every believer engages in. That's why Jesus said it this way. When you fast, He did not say if you fast. He did not say if you're called to fast. He didn't say someday you may want to fast. He says when you fast. In that same section, he says when you give, when you pray, and when you fast. And it is written in the Greek in such a way to let us know that it is not something that is uh, an option. It is not something that is meant to be something we can or cannot do. It is something that God has actually called every believer in here to do. And if you've never engaged it, now is the time time for you to jump in and let this be a spiritual discipline for you as a believer. John Wesley said this. He said, the man who never fasts is no more in the way to heaven than the man who never prays. Now, I'm not telling you you're not going to heaven if you've never fasted. That is not what I'm saying. But I'm telling you that that the scripture teaches that this is a A discipline that is supposed to be in the life of every man, woman, boy, and girl in this room. It is is meaningful. It is beneficial. What do we get when we fast? Well, let's talk about what fasting is because some some people still don't even know that word itself. What is fasting? It is giving up food for spiritual purposes. That, that That is a layman's definition. That's That's as simple as I can make it. It is giving up food. For spiritual purposes. Now, Christianity is not the only form of religion that fasts. In fact, I don't know if you know this, interesting fact, every religion on planet earth, every major religion on planet earth fasts. Every one of them. This is something that is common. Guess what else? Not just religion. As I said a moment ago, doctors and medical professionals, they will, um, we we had someone that was uh, diagnosed with a severe terminal cancer one time that was assigned as a form of, uh, of, of, of healing for cancer, terminal cancer. They were assigned a fast uh, to do because they have found that fasting even will go as far as to help terminal illness. Um, And so it is something that goes even beyond just religion. It's something that we can look as a culture and we can see the benefit of it. Um, but, But when we do it the way that we do it as a church, it is primarily a religious Experience, And I don't mean religious because you know uh, there ain't no religious bone in my body. I don't mean it like that. I'm talking about it is a, a God thing, okay? This is not something that I do for me. This is something that is very spiritual. It is very deep and meaningful in my life. Um, one definition that I heard about fasting that I really loved many years ago, this was in the early 2000s. I wish I knew who said it. I don't. I just remember it. It sticks out in my mind. It says uh, that fasting is a reminder that my spirit is stronger than my flesh, And I like that. I like that definition of it. That is a reminder that my spirit is stronger than my flesh. Now, I'm not someone who tells you that all fasting has to be food. We are going to do food for this. But I'm someone who believes that if you you need to give up Facebook for a month or five months or a year, you might ought to do it. Amen? That's okay. If you need to give up TV, anything that is a distraction can be something that you engage in while you're fasting. And I think that's biblical. That's not my opinion. I think that's one of the reasons why when Jesus fasted, where did he fast? He went out into the desert. He pulled his way, himself away from everything that was a distraction, everything that was a hindrance, and he got away from all of that so that he could just focus on God. So it is giving up food for the sake of a spiritual purpose. Now, what do we get when we fast. Number one, we get this. We draw close to God. That is the primary goal. That's it. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Number two, the second thing that happens when I fast is I actually begin to hear God clearly. Anytime that your pastor goes through a season where hearing God is troubling and it's difficult, you will always see that I engage in a fast. 
because there's something, this is, this is my illustration. I called some people to see if anybody had any and I didn't find any. And I'm sure there's somebody that's going to say, I had some of them, Scott, y'all bird, Neil, one of y'all is going to tell me y'all got this. I know it. But there was a day, I don't know if you remember this. There was a day many years ago, young people that are in the room where we had these things that are hooked up to our TV. They were called rabbit ears. <laughs> Come on, somebody, anybody? And what these rabbit ears would do is they would take the four channels that you got and they would either distort them or they would make them more clear. And if you were really fancy, you had this little rotary thing next to your TV and you would turn it and on top of your house, you had a big hunk of metal that would go, Yeah. right? Anybody remember that? Some of y'all too bougie to even remember this stuff. You got to remember, I didn't have cable or uh, satellite till I was a senior in high school. We had rabbit ears till I was a senior in high school. And so when you would play with rabbit ears, what would you do? You'd get in front of the TV or wherever it was, and you'd move it around the room, and you'd twist them things around or whatever. You'd put tinfoil on them, anything you could do, right? That you could, and you'd tell everybody in the house, okay, can you see it now? No, 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 I can't see it yet. Wait, there it is. Whoa, whoa, you went too far. You went too far. Go back. And it was just the most aggravating process because it didn't matter how close you got to getting it, you would always go too far, right? Amen? And then somebody would finally end up saying, that's good enough. You know, it's good enough. Fasting is an adjustment of the rabbit ears. Okay? It is an adjustment of the rabbit ears. There are times in our lives, listen to me, church, there are times in our lives when the clarity from God to me is not very clear. The reception is not going well. And it is not because it's not in the atmosphere. It's because there's a disconnect on my part in tuning in to the frequency. Are you with me? The frequency matters. And so this adjusts the frequency. And then number three, the third thing that happens is it brings obedience back to the center of my life. And obedience is key on my journey with Jesus. I have to be someone who understands that obedience is better than sacrifice. Guess what is better than fasting? Obedience. That's why when we fast, I don't tell you how to do it. And anybody that has ever been around me for many years, um, Tiff will tell you, we led fast for many years in Gainesville. And I would get call after call after call after call. Can I eat this? Can I eat this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And I would get so aggravated. I would say, I don't know. What did God say? I'm not God. This is not me trying to standardize some idea and some principle in your life. This is about you letting obedience be at the center of your life. And listen, it is not about what anybody tells you to do. It is about you saying, okay, this is what I need to do. That's why I'm not telling you to do it once a week. I'm not telling you to do it once a month. I'm not telling you to do it once in six months. I don't know what the Lord is going to lead you to do, but all I want to happen is I want you to draw near to God. I want you to be able to hear God clearly, and I want obedience to be the center at the center of your life. Amen? Are you with me? You guys are a little peppier than the first service, so I appreciate that. Now, let's, let's talk about what Jesus says here. He says, we... We have to know, though, in Matthew, what he says is he says, I have to know what my motive is. I have to know what my motive is. What is my motive for fasting? Is it for people to see me? Is it for me to manipulate God? Or is it just so that I can get to God? So that I can have him? And there are people who would read this section of Matthew that I just read to you, and they would say, well, John... He says that you're not supposed to tell people when you fast. So how is it that we're doing a corporate fast? How is it that God could, could do that? No, no, no. He never tells us not to tell people. He tells us not to tell people if that's your motive. In fact, all through the Bible, what you see is, as you see people fasting together and people calling fast, uh, we see it with Daniel. The Bible says Daniel got all of his friends together and they begin to fast together. The Bible says when Esther heard about the destruction of the Israelites and Mordecai and her were having that interaction, that she called to Mordecai. And what did she tell Mordecai? I want you to get all the people to fast together with me. It's not that we can't tell people that we're fasting. That just can't be the motive of it. Amen. It can't be the motive of it. So listen, the fact that we're going to do it corporately, not only is it okay that we do that, this, I would say the scripture teaches us that this is a necessary way that we fast, not alone. Now, there are days you're going to fast by yourself. Those are beneficial, but there's something special about when we come together 
corporately to fast together. Amen? I'm going to give you two points, and both of these will be on the screen. Number one, fasting is hungering for God. Fasting is hungering for God. And this goes back to what the Lord was dealing with my heart and my spirit about. This sounds so simple on the surface, doesn't it? It just sounds so simple. It's, fasting is hungering for God. There, there's something that I was researching. When I was thinking about hungering, uh, I wanted to find out about the stomach growl. Come on, somebody. Anybody have a stomach that growls from time to time? Some of y'all may already be going. Um, and I don't know this, and I, I hope, no, I've, I've already talked about Ms. Yarber enough, but Ms. Yarber, I hope I say this word right, and y'all don't know if you know if I'm saying it right, but if I'm not saying it right, just say my pastor's not very intelligent, and we'll move on, because um, I've never heard this word, but there's a, there's a word that I found, it's called uh, grilling. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a hormone in my body, and it's a hormone in your body. It's actually called the hunger hormone, and ghrelin is the hormone that is released in your body that gives you hunger pain, and it makes your stomach growl. So look, at if you sit next to somebody that their stomach's growling and say, you got a good grillin body, come on. <laughs> Uh, some of y'all know what it is just to have a good grilling body, right? And so there is this, this thing that God put on the inside of me. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. You've been in a situation where it was real quiet and then your stomach started growling and then everybody looked at you and you're like, it was just my stomach, right? Like, don't, don't worry, it's just my stomach. And so you're trying to explain away what that noise was, right? And so we all know what it is to have that, that, that embarrassing moment or that hunger pain. Or anybody here, have you ever been hangry? Come on, anybody ever been hangry? hungry and you were just to the point of just wanting to cry because you were so hungry like you was just angry at everybody yelling at everybody mad at everybody because you've been wanting to eat and nobody's giving you nothing to eat and so there's these hunger pains that actually comes from this thing called grilling and it is a, um, a hormone that your body actually releases to let you know hey you're hungry isn't it great that I don't have to remind myself to eat because there is something God put on the inside of me that says, you hungry. And as long as that thing, that grilling is being released into my body, that grilling is saying, you need a Twinkie. You need a cheeseburger. You need something to hold me over to make it where my stomach will stop growling. Over the next few hours, my stomach will get to where it is going to start growling tremendously loud, so we gotta end the service very soon. Now, when I think about that, this is my prayer, and this is what I feel like the Lord was leading me to tell you guys. I pray that as we spend this year together, as we fast, that God will give you such a spiritual grilling for God. Something that is just released inside of you whenever it is that you've been away too long, whenever you needed some. Listen, my prayer is, is that when, when, when you're fasting, and, and so that's one of the things that we're going to do. Is, is when I'm fasting, why, why does it matter? Why does it matter that I give up food? Because I need to have that hunger moment so that I can remember to hunger for him. That is valuable. And I could say, you know what? I, I, have this, I have this thing going on on the inside of me that is uncomfortable. Uh, I've got something that is messing with me, telling me it is time to pray. It is time to worship. It is time to get in the word. It is time to get back in relationship with Jesus. There's got to be a hunger. Listen, I love the fact, listen, if you're, not, if you're not a part of this church, let me tell you something I really do believe about, about the people that are gathered here. Jason, we're hungry. I believe that. I, I do. I, I'm not just blowing smoke at you. I hope that you're here because you know that you have a pastor that is actually hungry. I'm not a pastor that just comes up here on Sundays to do this to get a paycheck. I'm not here because I just want to be a pastor or because I like being a pastor. I hope that you're here because you actually see a guy that is passionately pursuing God and you see a guy that is, a guy that is hungry and he is starving for more of God and I see that in a lot of you and that's one of the things when I when I I think about why I love my church. I love the fact that we are a hungry church. Amen. 
that we are not a satisfied church. That, that listen, listen, I, 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 I'm sorry, guys. I'm a dreamer. I'm someone who thinks beyond where I am. And I go, I want to see what God has next. I want to take hold. That's just how I am. I can celebrate for just a moment for whatever God has done. But I can't stay there very long because I'm just a hungry guy. That's just the way that I operate, man. And I hope that you love that about this church is that we've got a group of people here that really are hungry for something. We're hungry. We're, we're not satisfied with just going through the motions of being together. But we're hungry for something. And my prayer is, is that as we're fasting, that there would be a disturbance on the inside of my spirit that says you're, 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 you're hungry for God and you, you, need to, you need to worship right now. You need to pray right now. You need to get in the word right now. You need to spend some time with him right now. My prayer for you as well as it is for myself is that, that, that my spiritual life be as successful as my snack life. Come on, somebody. That every time that that, that, that hunger gets to growling, man, every time that that hunger pain starts to come on me, I'm ready ready to go out. I'm ready to feel that hunger, but I don't want it to happen in the natural. I want it to happen in the spirit. In 2 Kings chapter 7, let me tell you what will happen if you're not careful. 2 Kings chapter 7, there's a story in the Bible. Um, it actually goes back into chapter 6 and 5, but, but mostly in 6, and what I'm going to talk about here is in chapter 6. Um, th there's, this, there's this famine that hits the people of Israel. I don't know if you remember this, but, but the, the, the people of Israel are actually surrounded by the enemy, and they've cut off all supply from coming into the city. They're in a famine. They're in a drought. And, and, and let me tell you this, that, that while they're in the middle of this famine, the crisis gets so bad, they become so hungry, that the Bible says that they started to, that they were, they started to eat things that they once considered to be unacceptable for consumption. The Bible says, check this out, this is crazy. The Bible says that they were so hungry that they were paying 80 pieces of silver for donkey's head for lunch. And they would have never even considered eating a donkey's head. They were so hungry, they were, they were paying 80 pieces of silver for eating a donkey's head. And as if that wasn't bad enough, check this out, Gil, if that wasn't bad enough, you know, maybe, maybe the, the insurance business had a rough week and you couldn't afford a donkey head that week, but maybe, maybe you, you had a, a little bit less silver and you could go get something to eat. For five pieces of silver, guess what you could have? You could have a bowl of dove poo. For five pieces of silver. And this is, this is what I know. When I'm hungry, if I do not consume the right things to fill that hunger, I will be pressed to consume the wrong things. And if I'm not careful, when I'm hungry, if I don't focus that hunger towards the right places, that what I will do is I will begin to consume things that I said I would never consume. Come on, church, are you with me? How many people do we have sitting in our churches every single week that are addicted to pornography? And it's not because they want to be addicted to pornography. Nobody woke up and said, I don't really like my marriage. I don't want to be addicted. I, I want to be addicted. Nobody woke up and said, you know what happened? They had a spiritual hunger that was growing inside of them. And slowly over time, they started to ignore that spiritual hunger. And because they didn't feed themselves with the right thing, the wrong thing started sounding really appetizing. Come on, this is good teaching. This is why we fast. To make sure that when we are hungry, that we are not letting our lives be directed to hunger for things that will not feed and will not fill us. Because if we are not careful, when God is trying to create a hunger on the inside of us as his people, if we are not careful, what will happen is, is we will begin to feed on carnal things, things that we said we would never partake of, things that we said we would never indulge in, and we will start doing it, and then we will wonder why our lives feel empty and void. And it's because we didn't manage the hunger correctly, and it leaves our souls lean and dry. That's why we fast. Some of you, it's been so long since you've had one moment, one encounter with Jesus. 
And it's because your hunger is leading you to the wrong places. And you're filling your lives with all the wrong things. And instead of partaking of what God has called you to partake of, now you're eating donkey's head and dove's dung. And then you're going, what in the world has happened? But then the Bible says in 2 Kings 6 that there are four men with leprosy sitting outside the city. And we talked about this just a few weeks ago. Four men sitting on the outside of the city. Leprosy, men with leprosy. Men that they would have never been the ones that should have, should have been the heroes of the story. Guys that were outcast, guys that were sent out. Not only were they hungry, they had leprosy. And in the Bible days, did you know leprosy was so bad in the Bible days? It said that you would lose like parts of your body. Complete limbs would be lost. So we don't know if these guys even had legs. We don't know how bad it was, but it's possible these guys didn't even have legs left. And you know what happened? Four men that were outside of a city, they started to hunger. And the, the, what did the men say? They said, what? Why sit here and starve until we die? And what was it that led four men outside of a city to a miracle that changed an entire city? Do you know what it was? Hunger. Hunger. Changed the whole city. Four men. Hunger. And this is what the Lord told me to tell you. The only thing that will move you from where you are to where God is taking you and to your miracle, the only thing that will get you there is hunger. Hunger will do one of two things for you. It will cause you to sacrifice everything or it will cause you to take hold of everything. We see it with the story with Jacob and Esau. Esau was so hungry, he was starving to death. What did he do? He traded his birthright for a bowl of beans. Some of you, because your hunger is in the wrong place, you are spending your lives trading your birthright for a bowl of beans. But on the other side of that, we see in Luke 15, a prodigal son who is sitting in a pig pen, and we always talk about the end of the story that this boy goes home and his father accepts him and he gets a ring and he gets a coat and he gets new shoes, he gets all of this stuff. But how did the boy get from the pig pen to the new coat, the ring, the new shoes, and the fattened calf? How did he get there? One word, verse 17 says, he looked around. He didn't say, I stink and I don't like stinking anymore. He didn't say, man, I'm hanging out with pigs. I don't like hanging out with pigs anymore the bible says that he came to his senses and he looked out and he said i am starving to death and it was hunger that moved that young man from a place of nastiness lowliness brokenness back to the father's house hunger that's what we need hunger Jesus tells us in John 6, 35, what did he say? I am the bread of life. Whoever hungers for me will never be hungry again. Whoever thirsts for me will never be thirsty again. Jesus says in Matthew 4, what did he say? Man will not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. There is there is something that your physical hunger that God put on the inside of you is trying to show you about your relationship with him. The reason that we fast, guys, listen, the reason that we are fasting together is because we want you to let that hunger direct you back to a spiritual hunger. So that every time I get hungry, every time, and, and see, that's what people have never understood about fasting with me. They always go, how can you do that? How do you, don't you get hungry? I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the point. <laughs> the, the point is so I will be reminded that I will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The point is, is that when I get hungry, I have to remind myself, but he said, I am the bread of life. And that Anyone who partakes of me will never be hungry again. That's why we do it. Number two, dad, you come on up. I'm gonna fly through these. There is a fast when you feast. I mean, there is a feast when you fast. There is a feast when you fast. Fasting is not all giving up. There is a receiving nature of fasting that is very powerful. 
Fasting does produce fruit. Let me, let me tell you something about fasting. Fasting, when it starts, is very fun and exciting, but it doesn't last. <laughs> Amen? Anybody ever fasted? You know, it was so funny. When we started fasting, especially when we were in Gainesville, because the people at the church that we were at in Gainesville, none of them had ever even fasted before. And it's amazing because I don't know if you know anything about the fasting movement, but the whole world started fasting because of Gainesville, Georgia, because of Jensen Franklin and Free Chapel Church. I mean, he literally changed the world through his teaching on fasting. And you would think that in we were in Gainesville, you would think that it would be such a common thing. Um, the, in Gainesville, check this out. There are so many people that fast fast in Gainesville, Georgia, every restaurant in the city, including fast food chains, change their entire menu so that way they'll have people come and eat because everybody is fasting. It's amazing. And it's funny because when you start talking about fasting, everybody gets all excited. Oh, we going to fast. And it's going to be all, everybody's all pumped up about it and they get that first day and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I ain't eating, I'm fasting today and everybody's all excited about it. But about day three, that headache starts hitting in for them Coca-Colas. It don't take long. And then what was once fun, guess what? It becomes a grind. I'm sure you coaches that are here right now, you can understand what I'm talking about. It goes from being fun to a grind real quick. And when you're in that grind, there's this little voice that comes into your head. This is what that voice says. Let me tell you what that voice says. That voice says, why in the world are you doing this? When I, when I fasted for the very first time, uh, I was a sophomore in college when I really fasted. Uh, we had been doing fast here, but I'd never engaged in anything other than a Daniel fast until I got to college. I had a professor in college and one of my mentors, um, he was our spiritual disciplines teacher in a spiritual disciplines class. His name was Dr. Wong. He was from Malaysia. And Dr. Wong did three 40-day total fast every year. Three 40-day fasts. And I mean, we're, 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 he, we're listening to this guy teach us on fasting, and we're like, man, this is crazy. So my very first fast was actually an assignment for college. I know that's weird to people, but it was. I, had, I, had an, I was assigned to fast for seven days. And I remember sitting down with, with Dr. Wong, and I was like, man, I was like, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be great. And... Um, I was working in commerce at the time. I was working at the outlet stores in commerce during college. And I'll never forget that uh, on the third day, man, I was like, it was not exciting anymore. <laughs> and that grilling was going on big time. And about that third day, I started thinking in the back of my head. I started going, why are you even doing this? This is pointless. This isn't going to make a difference. I ate. On that third night, I felt like such a failure. I don't know if any of you that have ever fasted have ever broken the fast ahead of when you said you were going to, and you just, man, you, the devil just beats you down. And I remember just being so discouraged about it. I was like, man, I blew it. And I went back to school the next day, and I'm already a struggling student. Come on, somebody. I didn't talk about that. I said, man, this is the one assignment I was hoping I could do because all I had to do was not eat. And I went to Dr. Wong, and I sat down with Dr. Wong. I'm, I'm weeping, not because I didn't do the assignment right. I mean, I am. I'm weeping because I feel like a failure. And I said, Dr. Wong, I said, man, I said, at work last night, I said, um, I said, man, I ate uh, and I just feel like such a failure. I feel like I've just let God down so much. And I'll never forget Dr. Wong looking over at me. And he said, then start back now. And he said, don't let the devil keep you down. He said, you went three days without food. He said, you better start celebrating what the Lord did in those three days instead of feeling like a failure. And he said, and if you'll do that, then you'll jump back in. And, and I, I did. It was, so, it was so refreshing to hear him encourage me that way. And now I know. I didn't know it then, but now I know when that little voice comes in my head and it goes, well, John, what are you even doing this for? It's not even making a difference. Now I know that that's when the fast is really working. Because at that point in the fast, I not only have God's attention, but now I have the devil's attention too. <laughs> and you know you're good when you got God's attention and the devil's attention. 
Listen, there is a feast that can be had. Um, I wrote down a list of things. I've got tons of notes here that if anybody wants them, I'll give them to you. I'm just gonna run through them and then we're gonna do a corporate prayer time today. I know that's not the way that we normally end, but we are gonna do a corporate thing. Um, this is some of the fruit that you can get. This is how you feast when you fast. This is what you get in the seasons of fasting. This is not why we do it. This is a benefit of what we get to be a part of. Number one, Moses fasted and received revelation in Exodus 34. So if you're someone who needs revelation, then God will give you revelation during a time of fasting. Number two, Esther fasted in the book of Esther and she found favor with the king. And she found herself in the presence of the king. So if you're here and you want favor and you want to be in the presence of the king, then you need to fast. Number three, Hannah fasted and she produced a child. And if you're here and you feel like everybody else is producing but you and you're not producing nothing, then maybe if you'll fast, you'll start seeing some production in your life that you've never seen before. Number four, Jesus fasted in Matthew chapter four in the middle of the wilderness, in the middle of a battle with the devil, and he overcame the devil's attack on his life. So if you're here and you've been under attack by the devil, then you can fast and he will bring victory into that moment. Number five, David fasted and was able to move out of a season of depression and out of a season of mental uh, uh, difficulty. If you remember, uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, he had just slept with Delilah, had a baby, killed Uriah. The baby was born. The baby died. D David is depressed, lying in ashes, and he is fasting before God. And it was out of this fast that God brought him out of depression, and he brought him into a new joyful place. And it says it not just there, but in Esther chapter 4 verse 3, same thing happened. Judges chapter 20 verse 26, when the Israelites were in a battle, it says it in 1 Samuel chapter 31, when the Israelites lights were reacting to Saul's death that, that God brought them out of depression because of a fast. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4 it says they fasted because they were weeping over the city and God brought them out of that with joy. So if you're struggling emotionally a fast can help you. Number 6 you can fast for your family. This is something we see in multiple times in scripture that if you want to pray for your children, your marriage, whatever in Ezra chapter 8 verses 21 to 23 maybe my favorite time where they were on a difficult journey journey with their families and they asked God to protect their families through difficult journey and God's hand stayed on them because they fasted and prayed for their families. Number seven, if you're someone who needs purpose, you can find purpose when you fast. We see this in Acts 13 verse one with Paul and Barnabas, they were sent out out of a fast. We see in number eight that you can actually heal a city by fasting. We see Nehemiah did this in chapter one verse four, I just quoted it, but there are other times in the Bible, but even prayer Presidents, if you didn't know, Abraham Lincoln called a fast for the entire nation, and the entire nation was saved because of a fast that was led by a president that most of you've never even heard or read about in a history book. Fasting will actually save a city. Our city can be changed from a fast. Number 10, I mean, number nine, it says if you don't feel God activated in your life, if you feel like He's not anywhere near you, you feel distance from Him, according to Matthew 9, verses 14 and 15. You can be drawn close to God through a fast. Number 10, and maybe the most important one, listen, some things will only happen when you fast. Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 says, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. There are some things, listen church, there are some things in your life that are not going to happen unless you fast. I don't know why, but that's what I know. And so what I wanna get you to do is I want you to stand up this morning with us. Are you excited about fasting now? <laughs> I know this isn't the most exciting first of the year message, but it ought to be because there's a lot of feasting that's coming with this, okay? There's a lot of feasting that's coming with this. In fact, I would encourage you to go read the whole chapter of Isaiah chapter 58. I'm not going to read it, but it goes into when we do a fast that God chooses for us, 
It gives what will happen. It talks about the light breaking from the dawn. It talks about healing that comes with it. It talks about people being set free. It talks about the rebuilding of the ancient walls and the ancient ruins that we will be called the restorers and the rebuilders when we will do a fast that God has called us to do. And I'm telling you that something good is about to come, something powerful. We're about to feast from this fast. I believe it. So I want you to bow your head, close your eyes. We're going to pray one corporate prayer. But I want you to start by asking yourself this one question. Am I hungry? And what am I consuming? That's a big question. Am I hungry? And what is that hunger leading me to consume? And I want you to begin to ask God right now in this moment. I want you just to begin to say, God, stir up my hunger for you. Stir up my hunger for you. Because if we as a church are going to get to where God is taking us next, it's going to happen because hunger moves us. It's going to happen because hunger moves us. So today, God, I pray that you stir that hunger up on the inside of each and every one of us that are in this room today, those that are watching online, let us, let us understand that we're consuming things that are not filling us, but we have been given the bread of life if we will partake of you and not focus on everything else that is calling, but we will let this hunger that we feel right now, let it bring us back to you. Stir up that hunger in our lives today, Jesus. I'm going to give you a, a, a moment to just, to just meditate on him. We're not going to bring the band up. We're not going to sing another song. We're not going to do any of the stuff that we normally do. Right now, I just want you to just sit, listen for just a moment. And we may even, may even go ahead and work on you and when and how and what. He's calling you to fast. But right now, I just want you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, what he's speaking to your heart, what he's speaking to your life. Right now, be sensitive to it, listen to it. Thank you, Jesus. God, we want to be a part of a fast that you choose. We want to be a part of a fast that stirs up hunger. And that is what you've spoken to my heart. That you are stirring up a hunger, a new hunger, a deep hunger hunger at Faith Community Church. And I pray right now that we will all find our place in this moment. God, that if there are, are, are people here right now that are still trying to consider, do I want to do this? God, I pray that you speak to their heart and let them know that this will benefit them. I want you to lead God and direct them, God. I do not want them to do something because I inspire them, because I talk them into it. I want them to have a moment with you where you lead them and guide them. God, some of them need to be praying for their families. Some of you right now, there's some freedom that is needed in your life and you need to be fasting. Some of you are in a battle right now with the enemy. And he says, I'm calling you to a fast. It will strengthen you, give you a shot of power. Whatever it is right now, God, purpose, revelation, favor, the presence of God, all the stuff that I said earlier, God, that the Bible teaches us that happened during fasting. God, I pray that they would see, God, that that is something that you're going to do in their life. But we don't do it for those things 
We do it as an act of worship to you. And we stand together right now as a church family, in person, online, both services, standing together right now as a church family, saying, God, we want more of you. We want to hear your voice, and we want obedience to be at the center of who we are. So my prayer today, God, is that you will take all of us together as a corporate body and that you will use us in this time of hunger. I pray, God, that you will stir up hunger in this place here. I pray for our students. I pray, God, that that you will hunger, that, that they will hunger for you in our student ministry, in our school system, I pray right now for job and work environments right now that there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere. There's going to be a hunger for you. I pray for our city right now that our city will never be the same again because you are going to bring a feast in this fast. And you are going to do what only you can do as we seek your face. God, I pray that you bring us together with with glad and sincere hearts as we fast together and as we hunger for you. God, I pray for those that are here that ask that question, am I hungry and what am I consuming? I pray right now, God, that they will redirect their hunger to consume the things of God, transform them right now from it, And use us together as we fast. Come on, church. Do you believe it? Come on. Come on. Just say amen. Come on, say amen with me. That means let it be. Say amen with me. Say let it be. Amen. Listen, if you have any questions about anything that we discussed, about how you can be a part of this, please reach out to me. If you need these notes, you want to read more about it, let me give you six things we're going to ask you to pray for real quick. Number one, if it is your day of fasting, I want you first of all to pray for yourself, your relationship with him. I want you to ask God to grow. That's what I want you to ask him to do. That's one of the words we're going to talk about in week three is grow. The second thing I want you to pray for is your family. That's why if you fast together, it would be a great time for you to pray together for your family. Number three, I want you to pray for this church. I want you to pray for this church. I want you to pray that what God has next for us, that we are walking into it. I want you to just help me just usher that thing in. Number four, I want you to pray for our community that goes for government, teachers, school system, coaches, Everything about this community, small business owners here, we're going to pray God brings success into those business owners. We're just going to pray for God's blessings over this community. Numbers five, we're going to pray for the nation. We're going to pray for our nation that is being divided. One of the things we see in the story in first, I mean, second Kings seven was they started eating each other's babies. That's what comes from hunger. We're in a place right now, the Lord showed me, where we're turning on one another because of hunger. So we're going to lift up our nation. And number six, we're going to lift up our our world. And we're going to believe across the world, God's going to bring a revival that touches the entire world. Amen? Amen. Love you guys. Love you guys. God bless you. Have an awesome day.